Hey, my name is Milan, and in this video, I'll give you an introduction to the Key Cloak Identity Provider. I'll show you how to create your first Key Cloak Realm, how to register a user, and how to obtain an access token that you can use to authenticate with your backend applications. Key Cloak is an open source identity and access management server. It's free to use, and you can find all of the useful information about Key Cloak on their website. They have many useful guides to get you started, and I'm going to walk you through the Getting Started guide as part of this video. Let's take a look at what are some of the features that Key Cloak offers. And out of the gate, you can see that they have single sign on capabilities. You also have social login providers, user federation. You get an admin console to administer your Key Cloak server as well as the account management console for individual user accounts. And Key Cloak also integrates with the standard authentication protocols such as OpenID Connect and OAuth 2 and SAML. And you can also use Key Cloak as an authorization server. This is a bit out of scope for this video, but I was planning to do multiple videos about Key Cloak, so we might cover this at some point. So these are some of the most important features that Key Cloak offers, but let's also discuss when you might consider using it over some cloud solution for authentication. I've used Key Cloak as an identity provider on a few projects in the past, and it worked excellent for our use case. We needed the ability to manage and control all of the data that's inside of the identity provider. And this is something that you can have when you are using a self-hosted solution such as Key Cloak. Whereas with an identity provider, for example, there are popular cloud solutions like Azure Enter ID, Amazon Cognito, Off0, Firebase Authentication comes to mind. Key Cloak is a bit different because you get to control all the data. And this can be very important for some companies out there, so this is something that you should keep in mind. Another alternative that you could consider is ASP.NET Core Identity, but it's not as robust as all of the features that KeyCloak offers. And there is also the Duende Identity Server, which requires a license, whereas KeyCloak has a free offering. You can also use KeyCloak in a microservices environment as the identity provider, and how the general flow would look like is a user of your system, is going to first authenticate with Key Cloak. And typically this is going to be the authorization code flow. Then once your user has obtained a valid access token, they can use it to send an API request to the backend application. The backend API is going to reach out to Key Cloak to obtain some metadata that's going to allow it to validate the access token. Key Cloak is going to give the API the required data. And once the API validates the access token, they can then proceed to serve the API request and return a response to the user. So this is the general flow, but we are going to focus on this part here, authenticating with Key Cloak and obtaining an access token, and we're going to leave the integration with a backend for another video. We can run Key Cloak in a Docker container, and here is the command that you will want to execute. A few things to highlight is that you can set the username and password for the administrator account. I'm going to set them to just admin. This is the image that we're going to be using to run Key Cloak and I'm going to use the start dev command because it's going to be faster for running key cloak locally. Now, when I run this command, it's going to fetch the key cloak image and it's going to start key cloak in the background. So you can see the key cloak server is slowly starting up. And once it's ready, we can navigate to the key cloak admin UI. And I'm going to show you a few more things for setting up your key cloak server. If I navigate to localhost 8080, which is the default port for key cloak, this is the UI that I'm going to see. This is just the sign-in screen for KeyCloak. And I'm going to specify the admin username and password. And this is going to open up the administrator dashboard for our KeyCloak server. And the first thing that we are going to do is to create a custom realm for our application. Now you do have a default realm and it's not advised that you use it for authentication and authorization purposes. This is just for managing your key cloak server. So let's create a new realm and I'll go ahead and give it a custom name. I'll name it MJ Tech. We're going to mark the realm as enabled. And after we click create, it's going to create our key cloak realm and we can start using it. The next thing we want to do is to create our first user. You can navigate to the user section and then click on create new user. Here we have to specify the username, email, and first name and last name for our user. I'm going to use milan at test.com as the username and password. And then I'll specify my first and last name. Notice that you can also assign some required actions for users logging in for the first time. For example, you could require them to update a password, verify their email. I'm going to leave this blank for simplicity's sake. And I'm also going to check that the email that I provided is verified. And after I create the user, you will be able to see the user details. Each user gets a unique ID 
in the Keycloak system. And by default, Keycloak is going to use an embedded H2 database for storing user information. You can also configure Keycloak to work with an existing database like Postgres. And this is also something that I'll discuss in some future videos. But for now, just be aware that each user gets a unique identifier that you can use to reference this user inside of your own system. We also want to give this user some credentials. So I'll click set password and I'm just going to use 123 for the password, but you can also enforce some password strength rules. I'm going to say that this isn't a temporary password and let's click save. So now that our user has some credentials, we can use them to authenticate with Keycloak. So if I navigate to this address, localhost 8080, which is our Keycloak server, and then realms and assign the name of our realm, which is mjtech and then account, this is the screen that's going to pop up. From here, I can specify the username and password of my user and sign in. And this is going to give me the account management screen for the individual user. Here I can manage some general information about the user. Now let's go back to the admin UI. And here I want to show you how to create a client. An OAuth client represents an application that can request authentication on behalf of a user. An application could be your web user interface or a backend API, and we're going to examine both of the options. So let's click create client. For the client type, you're going to choose OpenID Connect. The other option is SAML. For the client ID, I'm going to type in public client. And there is a distinction between public clients and confidential clients, which I'm going to discuss as we go on. And the main difference is which authentication flows you want to enable based on the client type. So public clients represent an application that cannot securely store a client secret which is why I named this a public client. And a client like this would be used to authenticate from your web user interface. A confidential client is more appropriate for server to server communication. And of course, we're going to create a confidential client. Let's go ahead and click next. And here we are going to configure the valid redirect URIs. And I'm going to point this to a test application on the Keycloak website. For the web origins, we are also going to specify the base Keycloak address. So let's go ahead and click save. And this is going to give us our public client. And then I'm going to navigate to the test application on the Keycloak website. This is the address where the test application is hosted. And here you can configure the name of the realm and the client as well as the address of your Keycloak server. I'm going to leave the default address for the Keycloak server. I'll specify the name of my realm, which is mjtech. And then I'm going to provide my client name, which is public client. Let's go ahead and click save. And now before attempting to sign in, I'm going to open up the developer tools and head over to the network tab. And once I click sign in, we're going to be redirected to our Keycloak instance. You can see that the URI here is localhost 8080 and the realm is mjtech. And here we can authenticate with an existing user account. So I'm going to specify milan and test.com and my user password. And after signing in, we're going to be redirected back to the Keycloak test application. You can see it says, hello, Milan Jovanovic. This is pulled from the access token that was returned. And here you can see a request to the token endpoint. Here is the request URL. It's pointing to our local Keycloak server. It's using our custom realm and the route is protocol OpenID connect slash token. This is a well-known route for getting an access token from an OAuth server. It's sending a post request and then let's examine the payload. First of all, we can see that the grant type is authorization code and this is the most common authorization flow from a user interface. You can see that the client ID is public client. The authorization code that is specified here is obtained when we authenticated with the Keycloak server. Keycloak appends this to the redirect URI and this is then sent using the authorization code flow to the server to obtain an access token. So if we take a look at the response, you can see that there is an access token here, an ID token, and a refresh token. We're going to examine this in detail a bit later. Now, let me close this down and let's go back to the admin UI. I'm going to quickly create another client. It's also going to be an OpenID Connect client and I'm going to call it the confidential client. Let's click next. And then I'm going to turn on client authentication and I'm going to check service account roles. This will allow me to use the client credentials flow, which is useful for applications that can securely store the client secret. Let's go ahead and click next. I'm going to leave all of this empty 
and save this client. Now, one difference that you might notice here is that we have the credentials tab and this is where you can find the client secret that is associated with this client instance. You can go ahead and reveal the client secret if you want to see it. You can copy this value and we're going to be using it when requesting an access token. And if you want to, you can also regenerate a new client secret. Now let's jump into Postman and take another look at how we can obtain an access token. I have to slightly update this request to reflect the new information. And the first thing I'm going to update is the name of our realm, which is MJ Tech. The route is pointing to our Keycloak server, and then the rest of the path is protocol, open ID connect, and then token. I'm sending a URL encoded form as the request body, and the grant type that I'm going to use is password. Now, this grant type isn't recommended, and it's more appropriate to use the authorization code flow, but if you want to directly obtain an access token with a username and password, this is what you're going to use. So let's update the name of the client to public client. The username is going to be milan at test.com and then the password is 123. And if I send this request, I'm going to get back an access token that I can use to authenticate with my backend application. Let's take a look at what's inside of this access token. If I paste in this access token on JWTIO, you can take a look at the payload. You can see that we are using the public client. Inside of the payload, we have a lot of additional claims for the user as well as the user email, the first and last name, and we also have the user ID inside of the subject claim. So we can use these values inside of our backend application to validate the access token. We also get a refresh token as part of this response, and you can exchange the refresh token for another access token. If I open up the refresh token request, the route is the same, it's pointing to our custom realm and the token endpoint. I'm using a grant type that is different this time, it's refresh token, I'm using the same client, and then for the refresh token value, I'm going to copy the one that we got when we requested the access token. And you can see that I can send this request to the Keycloak server and get a new access token. Let me also show you the confidential client. Here, I'm sending a client credentials request, I'm using the client ID of the confidential client, which is just the client name, and the client secret that you can obtain from the Keycloak admin UI. And if I send this request to the token endpoint, we're going to get back an access token and an ID token, and we can use this to authenticate between our backend services. So this is mostly meant for server-to-server -server communication. And with this, we're going to wrap up the introduction to the Keycloak identity provider, and in a future video, I'll show you how to integrate Keycloak with an ASP.NET Core application. If you want to see how to use a cloud-based identity provider, then you should watch this video next. Check out my clean architecture and modular monolith courses. And until next time, stay awesome.